Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. We have a squared minus b equals 15 and b squared minus a equals 15. And we're going to be solving for a and b values. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I want to use substitution. Obviously, substitution is a really cool method and with systems of equations, we use them almost all the time. So let's go ahead and isolate B from the first equation. We could also use the second one to isolate A. And the reason why I go with B or A is because I don't want to isolate the radical. I mean the quadratic, which you could definitely do. That's probably another way to approach it. But here's what I would do. I would just isolate the B here, put, uh, switch the A, B and 15. B would be A squared minus 15. And that's something I would like to substitute here. Make sense? So let's go ahead and replace b with a squared minus 15. Then I'm going to go ahead and square that, subtract a from it, and set it equal to 15. Nice. Looks good, right? Well, this is going to be cortic, so it's not going to be that nice. Just be prepared. We're going to square this a to the fourth minus 30 a squared. Remember the formula plus 225 minus a equals 15. And if you put everything on the same side and write this in standard form, you're going to get something like 210, 225 minus 15 equals 0. Great. Maybe not so great because this is not factorable by grouping and it's a quartic equation. But one of the things that's kind of nice is that it's a depressed quartic, which means there's no a cubed, right? The coefficient of a cubed is 0. So we can kind of use the quartic formula. And there's definitely different ways to solve the quartic. And one of them is basically you can go ahead and isolate the a to the fourth term, right? And then you can add something to both sides uh, to make the left hand side a perfect square, which at the same time uh, making the right hand side a perfect square. Of course, uh, they have to be perfect squares on both sides so that we can talk about, uh, you know, two squares being equal or uh, we can talk about difference of two squares. Make sense? So far, so good. Are you following? Now, what do you need to add? So here's what we're going to add to both sides. We're going to add 2k a squared. So we're going to add that in the middle. And then we're going to add k squared. So in other words, we're going to be adding 2k a squared plus k squared. That way, we're going to get something like a squared plus k quantity squared. Make sense? That's the goal. And of course, you have to add it on both sides. So 30a squared plus a minus 210 plus 2k a squared plus k squared. Make sense? Now, we need to arrange the right hand side a little bit since we're working with a here. Let's go ahead and put these two together. 2k plus 30 multiplied by a squared plus a and then plus k squared minus 210. So here's the deal, and that's a big deal, right? We're going to go ahead and we want this to be a perfect square. So the discriminant needs to be zero, right? B squared minus 4AC. C is K squared minus 210, and the whole thing is going to be zero. And then from here, we're going to get something real messy because we're going to get 8K. But basically, the whole idea is uh, for this to be, I guess I could write it like this, 4 times 2k plus 30 multiplied by k squared minus 210, and then that is going to equal 1, and then we can just go ahead and distribute everything. Uh, I can even um, just multiply these 2k cubed, 8k cubed, and then I'm going to get negative 2, negative 420k, right? And then I'm going to multiply that by 4, that's going to give me a minus 16,080k. And then notice that there are no like terms here. And I multiply those and I'm going to get 30k squared. That's going to give me 120k squared. And finally, you're supposed to multiply 30 by 210 and then by 4, which means 120 multiplied. Okay, so that just means that just means we're going to multiply 120 by negative 210, right? See, that's going to be very messy. And you're expecting to get a nice k value from here which is going to be really, really hard to find. Make sense? But it's a lot of work. At least I showed you 
the method and you can definitely go off of that and there's probably an easy way to do it anyways but uh, this doesn't work well okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the second method which obviously makes much more sense to me at least right okay great so we have a squared minus b equals 15 and b squared minus a equals 15. one of the things that you should probably notice right away is that these two expressions are equal to uh, the same number so that's a good point but before i get into the details let me go ahead and tell you can i isolate a from the first equation so you can kind of consider this third method i'll quickly outline it okay you could definitely isolate a squared and then square root both sides the problem with square and rooting both sides is the plus minus thing but let's just go with the plus sign first you can go ahead and plug this in here but guess what that's going to give you a radical equation and you have to isolate it you have to square both sides guess what you're going to end up with the cortic and probably the same cortic, which is a lot of work, super messy. You don't want to do that. But I, at least I kind of told you about it, right? Let's go ahead and proceed with the second method because I think it's the best, especially when the two numbers are equal. What would you do if they were not? Then you would probably have to go with the cortic anyways, right? So since these two things are equal to the same number, we can set them equal to each other. Make sense? And then from here, we're going to get something nice. Put everything on the same side. And notice that I can write this a squared minus b squared as a plus b times a minus b from difference of two squares. And then this one as one times a minus b because it's already a minus b. You see, switch them around, you'll see it. And now a minus b is a common factor. Pull it out and you're gonna have a plus b plus one equals zero. You see how neat that is? Of course, the numbers are equal, so what can I do? It's a contrived problem, but I know some people don't like contrived problems because they're like, they're not real life. Okay, this is like a competition level problem, so it is going to be contrived. Obviously, you don't want people to be looking for a solution for an hour. They don't have that much time, right? Maybe just five minutes, who knows? Anyways, here, we're gonna go ahead and set A minus B equal to zero, which indicates A equals B. But remember, we had a, quadratic equation now we can go ahead and replace a with b that's going to give us b squared minus b equals 15 that's a very easy quadratic which doesn't have integer solutions by the way but that's okay here uh, you can basically find b uh, by uh, using the quadratic formula negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 minus 4ac which is 61 plus 60 is 61 so you're going to get the six, uh, square root of 61 divided by 2. That's going to give you two solutions. B is either 1 plus root 61 over 2, or B is 1 minus root 61 over 2. But notice that, remember where we came from? We came from A equals B. So A values are going to be the exact same ones. So you can kind of make up ordered pairs. Make sense? Cool. So those are going to be the solutions from the first branch. What is the first branch? This one right here. The second branch is going to come from a plus b plus 1 equals 0. And that means a plus b is equal to negative 1. But remember, the first equation gave us what? a squared minus b equals 15. So what can I do? I can either isolate the b from here or from here. Let's do from the first one. I mean the second one or this one, whatever. Uh, b is equal to negative 1 minus a. Let's go ahead and plug it in here. So it's like a squared minus negative 1 minus a kind of double negation a squared plus 1 plus a is equal to 15 uh, do you think we're going to get complex solutions no nope, because a and c are opposite so we're going to get this and from here a values are going to be negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 1 plus 56 that's going to be a 57 and 57 doesn't have any perfect squares does it i don't think so because it's 3 times 19 come on they're both primes so it's just going to stay like that and um, from here, we can find the B value, but first we need to specify. For example, suppose I go with this, and then B is just gonna be negative one minus A, so it's gonna be like negative one plus the opposite of this, because I'm just adding the negative or the opposite, right? Negative two, negative one, uh, B is just gonna be negative one minus root 57 over two. So this is A, this is B, and you can pretty much do the same thing with the other solution. Same idea, right? Okay, great. That brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.